If you get frustrated every time you visit a website because you have to deal with a pop-up that asks you whether you consent to tracking cookies, then understand that that is all down to data protection because there are strict rules and fines for companies that don't comply. So in light of the recent debates about the prospects of your medical data being shared by NHS Digital, I thought it would be worth doing a video on the importance of data protection and what our regulator, the Information Commissioner's Office, says about how data is collected and the rules surrounding it. But first of all, if you're new to me and my channel, I'm a barrister who helps you understand law, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to check out my other channel, Black Belt Secrets, where you can see some behind the scenes footage and I'm doing what I call questions in the comments, where I will respond to your questions in the comments where they wouldn't otherwise fit on this channel here. So the Data Protection Act 2018 and of course GDPR, which most of you will be familiar with by now and which the UK has a retained version post Brexit place strict requirements on the collection, processing and sharing of your personal information, otherwise known as data, with other parties. So just for the avoidance of doubt, GDPR still applies and our retained version is known as the UK GDPR. But what exactly is personal data and why does it matter how it's collected and processed? Those are the two things broadly that I'm going to be talking about today. And the first part of that is relatively simple. Personal data is information that relates to an individual or an identifiable individual. And don't be confused by the identifiable part of that statement because an individual can be identified if any information can identify that individual. If an individual can be identified by a single or collection of pieces of information, then that is an identifiable individual and all of the information collected together is personal data. So that should also be understood to mean that even if that one piece of information by itself doesn't identify the individual, if it is taken in collection with other pieces of information or other things known, then that may also make that individual identifiable. Now, as to the people that actually handle your data, they are known as controllers or processors. I'll put a link to the ICO in the description below, but broadly speaking, controllers are either people or organizations that collect your data and decide what they're going to do with it and with whom it's going to be shared, whereas a processor is generally not the entity that is deciding whether to collect it, how it's collected, and how it's processed. They are just doing something with that data and generally following instructions of somebody else. But for the purposes of this video, I am more interested in talking about the principles behind the protection of personal data and the lawful basis for processing it. And this is so that you can develop a more rounded and objective view about the concepts of NHS Digital potentially sharing your medical data with other parties. So there are several key principles behind data protection which the ICO quite helpfully sets out on its website. Firstly, and quite obviously, Obviously that the collection and processing of personal data must be done lawfully, it must be done fairly, and of course it must be done in a very transparent way. The second is purpose limitation. Generally speaking, data that is collected should only be used for that particular purpose, unless there is a very good reason to justify why it is going to be used for another purpose. And even then, it's intertwined with lawfulness, fairness, and transparency. Third is data minimization. Again, this is relatively straightforward. There should only be the minimum amount of data collected and processed for the purposes that it was originally lawfully and fairly collected. The next principle is accuracy. Quite clearly, your data, if collected and processed, needs to be accurate. And this goes hand in hand with various laws about having the data removed, corrected or updated if it is not accurate. There is also a storage limitation. In other words, the data should only be stored and kept for as long as is necessary. This is not a hard and fast rule. There are different circumstances where data will be kept for a longer period of time. Typically, you can think about legal documents, insurance documents, bank documents. These sorts of things are generally kept for a longer period of time than something that may only be for a very short one-off incident. Next is integrity and confidentiality. In other words, it must be kept secure. And finally, there's accountability. So someone has to be in charge of making sure that all of these principles and laws are complied with. Now, doubtless one of the biggest impacts for businesses and organizations with the implementation of GDPR was whether or not a business could rely on a lawful basis for collecting and processing data or whether they required consent from that individual. And of course, various businesses acted and reacted in very different ways. For example, it was reported in 2017 that Weatherspoons decided to erase its entire database of more than 650,000 customers and email addresses 
because it didn't want to be seen as a company that marketed and promoted itself via email because it thought that their customers found it intrusive. Although they had previously used those emails for promotions and things of that nature. On the other hand, some firms were handed hefty fines by the ICO because their customers hadn't explicitly consented to receive emails. For example, Flybe were fined £70,000 because they sent just over 3 million emails asking their customers whether or not their details were up to date. At around the same time, it's reported that Honda was fined £13,000 by the ICO because it sent out emails asking their customers whether they consented to receive marketing emails. In the same year, Morrison's was fined more than £10,000 because again, it sent out emails to customers that had already opted out of receiving emails. And the list goes on. And I find it interesting that these were fines that were handed out just because companies sent out emails to those that either hadn't consented to receive those marketing emails or they'd opted out of receiving emails and received them nonetheless. But data protection, of course, is not all about receiving marketing emails, updates, and promotions. There is also a very real risk of identity theft because a fraudster can get hold of various pieces of information, put them together, and steal your identity, make applications for loans, credit cards, and all sorts of things that can cause you no end of difficulties. And in addition to the very tangible risks about personal data, there are hefty academic discussions on the subject as well. For example, Professor Skilton said it's almost impossible to determine whether or not we have any property rights in our personal information after we've given or allowed that information to be collected or sent to another party. And Holland concluded that we can only control our personal data to the extent that we conceal or manage its disclosure to any other third party. And from my point of view, this means that there is at least some burden on each and every individual to control and manage who has access to their data and to whom it's being disclosed. Now, as I've said in my previous videos, there is a very careful balancing exercise between the need to process data for legitimate purposes and the rights and freedoms and choices of those individuals to whom that data belongs. And in that respect, I think the ICO's website does a very good job of talking about the particular principles of fairness and transparency. Now, of course, these principles apply in all aspects of data protection, but in my view, particularly when an organization is not relying on consent. So I'm going to deal with consent just very briefly before talking about those principles. And again, the RCO website does a very good job of explaining what consent is and how it applies and makes some of the following statements. At the outset, it says that the UK GDPR sets a high standard for consent and that consent means offering individuals real choice and control. Genuine consent should put individuals in charge, build trust and engagement and enhance your reputation. And interestingly, and this is where a lot of companies fell foul of these rules because companies were using a pre-checked box to imply consent. So this guidance now says that consent requires a positive opt-in. Don't use pre-ticked boxes or any other method of default consent. So straight away, you can see that NHS Digital is not relying on consent to collect and process and share your data. So coming back to those principles, I'm going to review what the ICO website says about fairness and transparency. And again, the ICO website does a good job of explaining these. So instead of paraphrasing, I'm going to read out these sections so you can think about these for yourself and how it applies to the current debate so that you can get a fair and objective view of the situation. So under what is fairness, the ICO website says, Processing of personal data must always be fair as well as lawful. If any aspect of your processing is unfair, you will be in breach of this principle. Now remember this is written to be read by organizations that need to comply with these principles. In general, fairness means that you should only handle personal data in ways that people would reasonably expect and not use it in ways that have unjustified adverse effects on them. Assessing whether you are processing information fairly depends partly on how you obtain it. In particular, if anyone is deceived or misled when the personal data is obtained, then it is unlikely to be fair. Also, personal data may sometimes be used in a way that negatively affects an individual without this necessarily being unfair. What matters is whether or not such detriment is justified. And you should also ensure that you treat individuals fairly when they seek to exercise their rights over their data. This ties in with your obligation to facilitate the exercise of individuals' rights. Under transparency, the ICO writes as follows. Transparency is fundamentally linked to fairness. Transparency processing is about being clear, open and honest with people from the start about who you are and how and why you use their personal data. If individuals know at the outset what you will use their information for, 
they will be able to make an informed decision about whether to enter into a relationship or perhaps to renegotiate the terms of that relationship. Also, you must ensure that you tell individuals about your processing in a way that is easily accessible and easy to understand. So there is a bit of an overview of data protection, what it means, what personal data is, and some of the principles that apply throughout the processing of personal data, and what the ICO have to say about this. And for those of you that want to do more reading about the NHS data share, there is a draft policy paper called Data Saves Lives, because of course the originating principle is that data and information is necessary in order to carry out research, to develop medicines, fight diseases, and so on. So I'll leave a link to that paper in the description below for those of you that want to check that out and have a read of it. So in the meantime, I hope that this video provides a bit more understanding about data protection, personal information, and how it all works. Obviously it cannot be comprehensive because it is a very complex subject and you should always seek formal legal advice. And don't forget to check out my other channel, Black Belt Secrets, where you can see some behind the scenes footage and I'm doing what I call questions in the comments where I will respond to your questions in the comments where they wouldn't otherwise fit on this channel here. But otherwise, thank you for watching, thank you for your time and I'll see you next time.